And I want to share this with you. And this is the reason why most guys don't commit. It's because they don't have a fucking plan. That's right. Most guys in midlife don't have a plan. Men in their 20s and 30s, usually they're on the hunt for a wife. So their plan is I want the mother of my children. So they have a plan. In their 40s, 50s, or 60s, most people don't have a plan. They don't know what a relationship looks like. So I'm going to give you a couple clues on how to circumvent this. So, ladies, before the penis goes inside the vagina, <laughs> ask him this question. What does a relationship look like for you? And what does commitment look like for you? Let me repeat that. What does relationship look like for you? And what does commitment look like for you? Don't ask if you want a relationship. Ask him what it looks like. And let me give you an example from my own playbook. I'm looking for a relationship where we spend three or four days and nights a week together, doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork, building skills, both in our personal and our professional life, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that leads to either getting married or living together. That's what it looks like for me. And that's what commitment looks like for me. In other words, there's a plan. And if a guy doesn't have a plan, he's winging it. He's winging it. He's winging it. But sadly, you ladies are fucking winging it too because you give your power. You expect the man to be in charge. You are in charge of your relationship destiny. Don't leave it up to a guy. All right. I shared a lot of content today. <laughs> Uh, I hope it made sense. I hope it may had gave you value. I hope this resonates with you because the reality is, is this, the traditional fantasy way isn't working. That's why I said, and this is why I'm a big proponent of taking charge of your destiny. And that's in all facets of your life. And it starts by loving on yourself, loving on yourself. And because when you can genuinely love yourself, you can actually begin to pay attention to the more critical things. And I'm going to share those with you. Number one, know your standards. Number two, know the bigger picture, understand love attachment style, understand the imago, see the bigger picture. And lastly, when something feels off, it usually is. And you have a choice. You can walk away or you can lean in, leaning in and start talking to one another. Start having deeper conversations. This is why I continually recommend this book, Eight Dates, or have even deeper conversations. Read this book called Emotional Intimacy by Robert Masters. It's kind of a dull read, but it's worth it. Because guess what? Intimacy, people intimacy into me you see that is what's going to make a healthy happy relationship when two people can bond at an intimate level but jonathan if i do any of this the guy will run away he'll be overwhelmed ladies only the wrong guy gets overwhelmed only the wrong guy gets overwhelmed only the wrong guy gets overwhelmed the right guy actually will lean in is this making sense if it is, give me a thumbs up. Give me an amen. Say hallelujah. All right. I think I covered the four obvious signs. He's never going to commit, even if he loves you. Just as a reminder, his professional life is in chaos. He's got a contentious relationship with his ex, or he still is in love with his ex. He says he's always busy with family and friends. He puts in minimal effort in relationship to your effort. And that bonus reason is he doesn't have a plan to commit. All right. Now it's time for Q&A. Um, Casey says, can different people trigger different attachment style? There are guys who make me feel secure and others that make me feel anxious. Yes. So most people have a default, I believe have a default or attachment style, whether it's anxious or avoidant. So what happens is when an anxious person which was, is, with, with a, is with another anxious person, it oftentimes causes one of them or both of them to become avoidant, number one. When two avoidance together makes it very difficult to actually build a relationship together. So, and when you're with a secure person, hopefully they have the patience to put up with your, you know, either your dysfunctionality or not. Um, 
What I prefer is really learning better communication skills. And I highly recommend reading the book, Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg. Not, by the way, this should have been titled Compassionate Communication. That's what it should have been titled. But that would be a great way to get started by building good communication skills along with understanding attachment style and having conversations about this on a regular basis. That's my invitation for everyone. All right. Thank you so much for that question, Casey.